relaxed at the northeast corner of Hollywood and Vine, waiting for my girl, Mike Malone. She was up the street having a quick stretch job done on her shoes, proving that even a clever woman sometimes flatters herself when she buys equipment for tootsies. A blimp went over and I looked up. The big bag of wind was interesting, but something else was much more interesting. On the roof of a tall building across the street, something made me stiffen like a steak in a deep freeze. A woman was sitting up there, her legs dangling over the parapet. She seemed to be writing something, although I couldn't be sure from that distance. Mike joined me and saw her too. She jolted me into action by suggesting that the lady was about to jump. I left my newspaper with Mike for safekeeping and hightailed it for the building. If the lady was writing a farewell note to the world, I was hoping she had a lot to say so I wouldn't be late. She was still composing when I got to the roof, and I slipped up behind her without making a sound. Let me go! Take it easy, baby. Your flying lesson's over for today. Please let me go. Not a chance. You don't look a day over 20. The latest insurance figures say life begins at 50. You wouldn't want to miss all that fun ahead, would you? I've got nothing to live for. Nothing. Oh, now, take it easy. You're too pretty to knock yourself off. Want to tell me what brought on the urge? Come on, let your hair down. I can't tell you. I can't. OK, later. <laughs> Go ahead, let the tears fall, beautiful. My jacket's pre-shrunk. she'd had her little cry, I convinced her she ought to have a cup of coffee in my office at the Golden Bubble. Naturally, Mike being a news hound for the Hollywood Herald, tailed along. Hi, Mike. Hi, Jeff. What'll it be? Coffee all around, Sally. Yeah, and hurry it up, please. My nerves are a little frayed. Oh, what's the score? I'm just before finding out, I hope. Bring on the java. Okay, I'll make it four cups and sit in myself. S suppose you start by telling me your name. I won't tell you. I'll never tell you. Oh, I wouldn't be too sure of that. Nadine? All right, Mike, give. I'd rather it would come from Nadine herself. Well, go on, tell him. It's the least you could do, considering he saved your life. I didn't want him to save me. If you just stayed out of it... If I'd stayed out of it, you'd be in the meat wagon on your way to the morgue with every bone in your beautiful body broken. Yeah, you were gonna jump off a roof. All because of that no-good Carlton. You know about Carlton, too? Why not? I, uh, picked up the tragic little note you were writing up on the roof. Roofs, jumping, meat wagons, Carlton. Say, what is this? I'll tell you in a minute. I'm sure Mike won't mind. Not at all. Carlton, you have hounded me until I have no choice. I've given you all the money I can, and I can't possibly get any more from Father. I hope the police find you, and that you are punished for what you have done to me, Nadine. Attempted suicide's a criminal offense, Nadine. Want to tell us your last name, or would you rather have the police check on it? It's Nadine Norris. And uh, who's Carlton? I don't know. You don't know? You in the habit of writing suicide notes to guys you don't know? A likely story. I'm telling you the truth. Carlton's his first name, I, I guess. I don't know who he is or what he does. Well, we know one of his occupations, blackmailing. That's right. He's been blackmailing me for several weeks now. What's he got on you? 
That takes a bit of explaining. You see, about a month ago, I had a tip with my father over my allowance. So I packed a bag and left home. Pasadena. Nice place to call home. They tell me millionaires rub shoulder with the common men over in Pasadena. But actually, nothing rubs off. Don't be preachy, Sullivan. Go on, Miss Norris. I went to Hollywood and got a room in a hotel under an assumed name. What name? Sally Sales. And you met uh, Carlton? Yes, that night in the bar. I was alone and so was he and, well, you know how that is. <laughs> yeah, sure, one drink leads to another. The last drink led to what? I don't know. The last thing I remember was driving my car out the Sunset Strip. Well, where did you pick up after you drew the blank? The next morning, in my hotel room. It was when Carlton brought me that awful newspaper. What awful newspaper? The one with the story in it about the old woman being run over and killed the night before. By a hit-and-run driver. On the Sunset Strip. By me. Mr. Jones, I wanted to go to the police. Please believe me. But Carlton advised against it. He insisted that the old woman was jaywalking when I hit her, and that if I didn't say anything, nobody would ever find out about it. He made it sound so convincing that I agreed, and then he said just to relax, and he'd come back later. Then what happened? As soon as he left, I went home. I felt safe there because he didn't know my real name. Horrible knowing I'd kill somebody. But I was terrified for what would happen if my father found out. You see, he had a heart attack about a year ago, and I was afraid the shock might kill him. Were you thinking about your father when you were planning to jump off that roof? I wasn't thinking about anything. I was terrified. I knew Carlton had me trapped. Oh, then he found you in Pasadena. The very next morning, he'd gotten my name off the registration slip in my car. He demanded $500 or he was going to call the police. So you gave it to him? No, I, I only had 100 But he said he'd wait until I got my allowance. You must get a nice fat allowance to stand a touch like that. Father only gives me 1000 a month. How sad. I'm crying my eyes out. Don't be facetious. My mother left me a trust fund. There's no reason why I shouldn't have a comfortable allowance. 1000 a month ain't comfortable. This, uh... Carlton. Naturally, he came back for more. Yes. We always do. How much was the second touch? Another 500. Then this morning he called and said he was going to have to have a thousand a month from now on. And that he'd expect the first payment today. Greedy, isn't he? I tried to bluff him. I, I told him that I was through paying off. That I was going to go to my father and tell him the whole story. He told you to go ahead. Your old man would gladly pay the cash to keep you out of jail, right? How did you know? Jeff's a very bright boy. Only he's being awfully dumb now. Meaning what? You're in over your head. Why don't you call Lieutenant Doyle? Doyle speaking. What's the beef? Sully, why should Jeff want to call me? How is he in over his head? Well, well, you see, it's like this, Lieutenant. Sully, you don't even know what it's like. Don't I? You certainly don't. And I'll thank you not to betray anything my client has said to me in confidence. As a matter of fact, I'll have to ask you to leave this booth immediately. Listen, nobody can talk to me in my own joint like that, see? Joe would never said a thing like that to me. I'm moving my office as of now. You'll help me, won't you, my dear? I most certainly will. Wait a minute, Jeff. You can't move out on this. You're part of the joint. It, it wouldn't be right without you around. And besides, you owe us money. Okay, I accept your apology, and I'll renew the lease for another year. Oh, gee, Jeff, thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Jeffrey, you are hiding something. What is it? I'll ask my client. Miss Norris, this is Lieutenant Doyle of Homicide. Is there anything about our confidential transaction you think he should know? Nothing at all. There you see, Lieutenant. Now, if you don't mind, we'd like to continue our discussion. Okay, character. But whatever shenanigans you're up to this time, just be careful you don't step on the toes of the police department. Now, where's your car? The one you were driving when you hit the old lady. It's at home. 
I haven't been near it since the accident. Has anybody else been near it? I don't think so. I, I put it in the carriage house and told my father it was in the shop for repairs. Okay, let's all drive out and have a look at it. What's the point in this? I admit I ran down and killed a woman. But you say you don't remember doing it. That's true. I, I don't. It could be you didn't kill anybody at all. Well, if you can prove that, Mr. Jones, I'll pay you anything you ask. I can't promise a thing, but the most it can cost you is 50 bucks a day plus expenses. Shall we go? All the way to Pasadena, Mike kept pestering me for the lowdown. I couldn't tell her a thing because there wasn't any lowdown. Yet. Once in a while, a hunch pays off. And I had a feeling that a look at Nadine's sedan might tell me something she didn't know about the blackmailer. Nadine led us out to the garage and I had a look around. There was a dent in the left front fender of the car. The paint was chipped out from the dented part. Fanning out from the dent were some streaks and splotches of something brownish red. Something that had once been liquid. This is blood, isn't it? Probably. From what you've told me of Carlton, he's smart enough to have planted it there. But Jeff, what are you saying? Nothing till I take a sample of this stuff and have it analyzed. But you said something about Carlton planting it. That's right. What did you mean? Yeah, don't be so mysterious. What did you mean? Well, I can't be sure, but if you'll notice carefully, the paint is missing from the dent in this fender. Oh, yeah, the paint's missing. So what does that prove? When you hit a solid object, such as a car or a stone wall, telephone pole, you're bound to lose some paint. But Carlton told Miss Norris she'd hit a nice, soft little old lady. Would that take the paint off? Then it is possible that I, I didn't kill her. That's my theory. Oh, Mr. Jones, I'm so grateful. All right, break it up. Fifty bucks a day plus expenses is all the gratitude he takes from clients when I'm around. Why don't you take Miss Malone inside for a sip of tea while I finish this gruesome little job? That's a good idea. Would you like to accompany me? Well, I... Go ahead. How often do you get a chance to sip tea in a four-car mansion? I went back to my job of scraping being very careful not to take any paint along with the stuff I was removing. All at once, I had the feeling that someone was watching my efforts. I was right. Having fun, mister? I dropped the knife and put up your hands. Do it quick or I'll blast you. I imagine you're a cotton. I imagine you're a copper. Your imagination's playing tricks on you. I'm just a hard-working private detective trying to make an honest living. Your hard work is over. You're taking a vacation, a permanent one. So you can retire for life on a thousand a month, is that it? Twelve thousand a year isn't bad interest on one bullet. I'll turn around. It'd be pretty silly to knock me off here. Who said anything about knocking you off here? I just want to make you ready for a little trip. I'll turn around. right after I chose him that I'd taken on a large order. Carlton was really rugged. Knowing that he wanted to kill me, I did my level best, but it wasn't quite good enough. I certainly hope Jeff's theory is right. So do I. You've no idea what I've been through. Jeff! Jeff, speak to me! What happened to him? Oh, he got slugged again with him. It's chronic. Another horse collar. Michael, you're probably the best horse collar shooter in the entire world. Oh, horse collar. Jeff, you're all right. Yeah, so's Carlton. Too bad you missed him. Carlton? Guy Mike just looped with a horse collar. Oh, that wasn't Carlton. It wasn't? No. Well, then who was it? I don't know. I've never seen him before. Well, he's got somebody working with him. You say Carlton demanded another thousand today? Yes, he phoned me this morning. When and where is the payoff? I don't know. He said he was going to call me later. 
Call me at the Golden Bubble the minute he hangs up, understand? Yes, I understand. I'll get a quick analysis of this stuff on the fender. But, Mr. Jones, there can't be a payoff because I won't have the thousand dollars. Certainly not. You're not going to pay him another dime. You mean you think there is a chance that I didn't kill that old woman? I can't be certain yet, but I think you're the one that got hit with knockout drops that night you went riding with Carlton. Back in Hollywood, I took my fender scrapings to a biochemist. He promised to put them on to boil and give me a rundown on the stuff by phone as soon as possible. Then Mike and I went back to my office at the Golden Bubble to await developments. There, we found a development waiting for us. And it was wearing a very black look. Good afternoon, Lieutenant. Did you wish to speak to me? I can think of pleasanter things. But it so happens, I do. The Lieutenant is irked. You're so right. One of these days, I'm going to irk him right into jail. Suppose you explain the shooting you were doing about an hour ago at the Norris Mansion. Well, I didn't fire a shot. The Pasadena police say different. Neighbors heard two shots fired at the Norris premises. Then they saw a man and a woman drive away in a car wearing your license numbers. You want to come clean? OK, I'll tell all, Lieutenant. There were two shots fired from my gun, but I didn't fire them. It was Mike shooting horse collars and out of season, too. Tattletale. Hey, what is this horse collars routine? It's no routine. She bagged two beauties. We're going to have him stuffed. Telephone. Excuse me, Lieutenant. Hello. Oh, hello, Mr. Jones. I've analyzed that substance you brought in. Yeah, what was it? Chicken blood. Ch chicken blood? Are you sure? No doubt about it. Well, hold on to the analysis. We'll use it later in court. Say, you in trouble with the chicken? No, but a couple other guys are. Yeah, happens all the time. What did the chemist say? What do you mean? Jeff, homicide has kind of a working arrangement with most biochemists. Whenever they're asked to analyze anything a little unusual, they generally give us a call. The stuff you took in was dried blood. But what kind? Chicken blood. Well, then Nadine Norris didn't kill anybody. Colin's been blackmailing and she's completely innocent. Michael Malone. Mm, I said the wrong thing, didn't I? No, you said the right thing, Mike. Jeff could have wound up with his license revoked on this one. From now on, I'm in, right? Right. You want to bring me up to date? OK. About a month ago, Nadine Norris and her old man had a big beef about money. She packed up and came to Hollywood, registered under a phony name. She met some guy at a bar. Telephone that Norris dame. Oh, well, thanks. Hello, Miss Norris. Mr. Jones, I'd like to tell you to drop the investigation. I'll send you a check for a day's pay and ten dollars for any expenses you may have incurred. Oh, now, wait a minute. You, you can't do that. What is it? Is he threatening you again? I don't care to discuss the matter any further. You're no longer in my employ. Hello. Aggravate me. What's the matter, Jeff? Nadine Norris just fired me. I guess Carlton threatened to kill her if she didn't ditch me. So she pays off. No, it won't work out that way. We'll knock over the blackmailers. How are you going to keep the Norrises from paying off? After the shooting report came in from Pasadena, I took the liberty of putting a hush-hush car on the Norris mansion. Oh, so if Nadine goes to meet the blackmailer, she'll be followed. Right, wonderful. And they'll relay the messages to my dear pal, Lieutenant Doyle. Right, pal? Correct. Would you like to sit in my car out back on the chance that we might pick up something on the squawk box? Don't mind if I do? Yeah, me neither. comes a time in every private detective's life when he has to admit that the police department is a very valuable and necessary institution. We sat in Doyle's car for maybe a half hour, waiting for word from the car shadowing the Norris mansion. Then it came, and we hung on every word. Relay to Lieutenant Doyle. Party under surveillance left home three minutes ago. Driving Roadster, general direction of Los Angeles. Hush Hush will keep you informed. That's all for now.
On her way. Where's she going? If we knew that, we could be there to meet her. Sounds reasonable. Don't look around, but the guy that slugged me is gandering us from behind that stack of beer cases. I'll ease inside, do a quick turn around the alley, and come back and nail him. That's no good. If you is gandering, you take off quick the minute you make a move. I'm the guy to handle him. You? He'd eat you alive. Oh, is that so, Mr. Jones? So you just wait right here and pick him up when I drop him. Add relay to Doyle. Party under surveillance now in Glendale. Heading north on San Fernando Road. Got it? Doyle, got it. Feels better already. Try nice slapping down, Sullivan. Here, take this gun and watch him. No, thanks. Never use one when I have my shillelagh. Well, I'll radio Hollywood Station to pick him up. Say, sounds like you guys are going someplace. We are. We're headed for San Fernando Valley to meet this gorilla's pal. Doyle gave his car a lot of gas as we headed out Lancashire Boulevard. The Hush Hush car kept in touch as Nadine Norris drove through Burbank and stayed with San Fernando Road, heading north, which could mean any one of a number of places, the ridge route or, or maybe a turn off to the Mojave Desert. The blackmailer had a lot of territory to choose from. So long. I got here as soon as I could. Anybody follow you? No. Give me the money. I could only bring you 300 in cash, but I'll give you a post-dated check for the other 700. It'll be good just as soon as I get my allowance. You silly little fool. You think I'd lay myself wide open by taking a check? I told you to bring cash. But I couldn't get it. I told you to tell your old man he'd have given it to you. I tried, but I couldn't. I was afraid because of his heart it might kill him. If he croaks, you get his dough, don't you? Yes, but... Shut up and listen to me. I'll take this 300 now. You're going to go home and tell your old man the whole story, including the fact he has to lay a grand on the line every month. Now, scram out of here. I'll call you at 8 o'clock and tell you where to bring the rest. Make it cash and be there. Don't gloat over it, Carlton. You're not going to spend it. I told you to stay in the car. Well, I thought you might need me. Look. Blackmailer slain, another captured. Well, well. Sure made a wonderful story for me. And just in time for the night final. How did her old man take the news when you interviewed him? Heart bother him? I should say not. He gave me a big kiss, did a little jig, and poured himself a double brandy. <laughs> Messenger brought this for you. From Henry Z. Norris. Yeah. Huh, the tycoon himself. Oh, go ahead and open it. Maybe it's got a big, fat message in it. For 320s, no message. No bonus? 
Just a day's pay plus expenses. Mm. Tycoons don't give it away. That's why they're tycoons. Oh, don't squawk. You too may be a tycoon someday. Maybe you're right. <laughs>